the CATI and Inflow. Mm -hmm. This is my uh, 3D experience world presentation on using dispatch to create more versatile serial numbers. This, uh, so there's three key takeaways for this presentation. Well, the first one is how can you overcome some of dispatch's limitations? Because dispatch, uh, you, you can find in a lot of circumstances ways in uh, which you can get around some of the limitations that you can run into with it. Um, the second key takeaway is going to be how to use complex dispatch functions. We're going to be doing a lot of jumping. Uh, we're going to be reading from the registry, writing to the registry. So we will be using some complex commands that will uh, achieve our goal of creating a serial number. Um, and then the third key takeaway is uh, how you can adapt a dispatch script to work for you. So it's more of like a call to action at the end of the presentation um, and some ideas for what you could do with this script. So, and of course I would go two slides instead of one. This is me. I'm uh, Lindsay Early, and uh, I have four boys. And as many of you probably know right now, everyone's working from home. So I deeply apologize if there is some background noise while I'm presenting. Me and my husband are sharing the same office, and I have all four children at home right now. <laughs> so it is a very interesting uh, situation that many of us are finding ourselves in right now. Um, so I started my career um, in the mechanical engineering gas turbine industry in 2007. Uh, I worked in industry for about three years, and then I have been working for SolidWorks resellers since 2010. I started at CAD Dimensions up in New York State, and I uh, started working for Fisher Unitech in 2011 when I moved to St. Louis. And Fisher Unitech was acquired by CATI and Inflow in 2019. So now I am a part of the uh, CATI Inflow team. I have been implementing PDM Professional for the last 10 years. Um, I have experience in PDM, DriveWorks, SolidWorks. I'm kind of a jack of all trades kind of person. And for some reason, every time I click, it's going twice. So. We're just going to go with it. <laughs> uh, so problem statement. Um, as many of you know, and probably the reason that most of you are in on this session is that serial numbers are not all that versatile in SolidWorks PDM right now. Uh, you can only initiate a serial number when you create a file. Uh, and then the other option is when you use the move tree function that started, I think, in 2018 or 2019. But you could only uh, put the serial number in the file name. You couldn't put it like in the data card if you were using the move tree function. The only time that it would automatically populate the data card is on a file creation. Some people don't want to pull serial numbers right away. Maybe you're creating um, a prototype and you don't want to pull those serial numbers until you know that you're going to move forward with production. Um, so. The freedom of adding it to dispatch is we can now trigger it in all the different ways that we would trigger a dispatch script. So for this example, we're going to say that we want to be able to trigger our serial number in the right click menu, which we can't do with a regular SOLIDWORKS PDM serial number. Um, we want to have the ability um, and flexibility to use a smart part numbering system if we would like. Um, and be able to add those serial numbers on the fly. So with the regular SOLIDWORKS PDM serial number functionality, you can only add a new serial number by creating one in the administration tool, which isn't very user friendly. You, if you create a lot of new serial numbers on the fly, then you want it to be able to just um, detect if it exists. And if it does, go to the next one. If it doesn't, then create it. And that's what the solution is going to do. Um, the other big thing about this is that we're not using API programming. API programming gets old. And as PDM updates year over year, you have to test that API program every year to make sure that it's compatible. When we use dispatch, the onus is on SOLIDWORKS 
to upgrade the dispatch script and you don't have to or not upgrade the script itself but up, update the api that's behind that so we don't have to worry about testing an api script every year it would be good to go ahead and test your dispatch scripts in a test environment but less of the responsibility is on you and more of it is on solidworks whenever you use dispatch scripts okay so developing the solution um, some of the challenges I've actually been thinking about this and wanting to do this for years I would go, go to it try to play with it try to make it happen run into a roadblock and stop and then I would be doing another dispatch script and I would get a bit more ideas and I would try those and then I'd hit another wall and then I'd stop so this is like probably four years in the making coming up with this script um, so some of the challenges of dispatch and trying to create serial numbers with it, first one is you can't read and write to PDM serial numbers from dispatch. You just can't. Uh, dispatch variables cannot be automatically updated by the script during execution, so like a runtime variable. Um, so like if I was to like loop through and move a counter up by one, I can't do that um, with a runtime variable. Um, you can read and write to the registry, but there's no way to share that registry information from one user to the other. So if I put the serial number information in the registry, we had no way to put it on somebody else's registry to make sure that everyone's got the same counters. And then the last challenge that I ran into, uh, I thought, okay, well, I'll make a dummy file and that dummy file will hold the serial number. Well, the serial number, um, I can't put it in the data card of that file because you can only read the data card of the file that invoked the dispatch script. You can write to the data card of something else, but you can't read the data card of something else. So that meant I had to um, put all the information that I need in the file name itself because I can't really read the file name, but I can detect whether that file exists or not. Okay. So these are some of the things that I ran into and that stopped me in my tracks while I was trying to develop this, but ultimately found a solution. And so that's what we're going to go through. So we're going to create a file that imitates a serial number. We're going to store all pertinent information in the file name. And then we're going to use a jump to see if the file exists. And we'll use a loop to cycle through. And we're just going to increment by one every time until we hit the right number. But because I can't increment on a runtime variable, I'm going to use the registry as my counter that will be incrementing. So that's um, how I'm combining the different things to make this work. So this is just an example of the jump where you there's these um, two things down at the bottom, which I didn't even pay attention to for such a long time, but you can actually see if something exists in the vault. So that's what we're going to use as our test. And it did it again. Okay. <laughs> so developing the solution. Um, the first thing that you have to do to make my dispatch script work is you need to create a virtual doc in the root or in the, um, basically I created a folder called serial numbers and I put it in there so it's just a virtual document that's why we have the dot cvd extension there and then the dot srl you have to put in an extension when you create a um, virtual document and i call it an srl but the extension is not important here and i'll just show you in my actual vault what this looks like So there's a lot of junk in my vault, so pardon that. But if we look over here, so I have this serial source.srl.cvd. So this is the original file that you'll start out with with my script. Okay, so there's a lot of variables we're going to have to create here uh, in order to run the script. So the prefix is going to be a runtime variable that's going to prompt the user to enter a prefix that's going to go before our serial number. 
This one, um, this is just uh, the current count. So this is going to track the count that is going to be tested. So as we loop through this, that's going to be the number that we're tracking. And then we have count two. Um, this is the one that's going to be at the end. It's going to be the count plus one that we'll assign. I found that I could not combine these into one when I was doing this because it was causing um, the looping to work incorrectly. So I separated it out into two different ones. Um, and these are registry variables. I put them inside of the PDM registry because that way I know it's not going to interfere with anything else. And if you want to install PDM, then it'll also get rid of those registry keys. You can put them wherever you want. It really doesn't matter. So I just call one of the registries doc count and one doc count two. Then we have this variable for the serial root. Um, so that's going to check for a virtual document named just after the prefix. So when I first created this script, and I have a couple examples here that are already employed and working. Oops, sorry. When I first created this script, I had it all combined into one file name. But I wanted the search at the beginning to be more efficient when I'm just checking for whether that prefix exists yet or not. And if I have to cycle through all the numbers and my numbers are pretty high, you know, it, it could cause a little bit of a delay on that. So I decided to separate it out into two files. You could put this into one if you wanted to, um, but I just felt it was easier and it made it a little bit more efficient to when I'm just searching for an extension, especially if it's a file that we don't have one for yet, it'll take 20 seconds to fail. Whereas, and but not necessarily fail, but recognize that that, it, that prefix doesn't exist yet. So to avoid that scenario, I created two files for every serial number, one with just the prefix, and the second one has the prefix and the counter. So then we have um, this create new. And so this one is, if it doesn't find the prefix, we're going to give the user the option to create a new serial number or to not create one. So maybe they typed in the prefix in wrong and they just want to redo it. Then they have the option to say no and it's not going to create that serial number. And then this last variable is the count. So this is going to check for a virtual document that has the prefix and the counter. So if we look here on the serial count, this is combining the prefix and the current count to give me my, um, to, to, for my search, whereas this one is just searching for the prefix. So the script is pretty complicated. I have it separated out into five segments, and we're going to go through each segment, what it does, why I did it that way, and that kind of stuff. But if you want an overall picture of what my script looks like, here it is. So the easy way to do this, or the way that I generally do it, is I try to think of, OK, what are the different sections that I'm going to do? So I just went ahead and created all the labels that I want to use. So you'll use labels in conjunction with jump commands to uh, move in the script in a manner that you need. So I have DNE. This is the does not exist. So if the prefix doesn't exist, it'll jump to this label. This is continue. So if we found the prefix, it's going to go here. Um, start is, I, I believe, the beginning of the loop where it's going to start testing the counters. Error is if we have an error where we exceed the maximal, maximum allowable limit for our counter value. Um, found is once we found our counter. And then end is the very end of the script. So I usually start by placing those labels in, and then I'll start filling in the rest of the data. So phase one. Phase one is going to prompt the user for a prefix and check to see if it exists. 
if it doesn't exist, it's going to go to the DNE label, which is the does not exist, phase two. If it does exist, it's going to jump to phase three, which is the continue loop. So you can see here, this is an edit box. It's using the runtime variable uh, for the prefix. And then we have a jump command. So if that serial root variable that we created earlier exists in the vault, then we're going to go to continue. And then if that fails, that means we go to this one. And this is doing an always condition. So I can actually, I'll bring up my administration tool and I can show you how that's set up. So you can say like, if you get to this step, you don't even have to do it a comparison. You can just say always and then say what label. And the reason that I did that here is because the very, well, in this case, it's kind of not needed. Um, I think when I first started doing it, it was important to have that step there because I had a different step earlier. In this case, you could probably leave these two out, um, but it does work the way it is. But if you ever want to always jump to another part of the script, when you hit a jump, then you would use the always condition. Let's go back to our presentation. Um, so then if, if it does exist, we're going to jump to the continue step. So phase two only occurs if the prefix does not exist. So this starts with the DNE label. Then you're going to get a yes or no message box to create a new one. And that's just going to assign a value of one or zero, depending on their yes or no answer. So if we look over here, you can see a yes value will give us a one and a no value will give us a zero. And that's how we set up that yes, no message box. So it's, it's the equivalent of like a checkbox or something. So if, uh, so then we're gonna do another jump. So if the create new was set to zero, then we're gonna jump to the end label, which is the very end of the script, which is basically gonna cancel the script. If it does, uh, if they do say yes, it's gonna go on to the next stop. So we're creating two files because like I said, I want one for the prefix and one for the serial number. So I'm using the copy and the check in actions. So I'm going to take that serial source that we created and I'm going to copy it into the same folder, but I'm going to use the prefix and then .srl.cbd. And then I just want to make sure that file gets checked in. You could put a comment here if you want to. I'm not going to. And then we're doing the same thing, but we're going to do the prefix. And then we're going to put dash zero because all of our serial numbers should start. It'll if we put a zero, that means when we first hit that serial number, it's going to go to one. So we'll start them all at zero. So it's the same thing. We're just going to put dash zero there and then check that in as well. So. So just. Um, in my notes here, he says uh, we have one with just the prefix. Why is because of speed and then one with the prefix and the counter and that's to set it at zero. This doing the one with just the prefix makes phase one go a lot faster. If you don't have uh, if you're putting in a new prefix that doesn't have a serial number yet. Otherwise, that one could go slower. Phase three, so this one. Um, is going to test possible file names for a counter until it is found. So if once phase two is done, it goes straight on to phase three. It doesn't jump anywhere. It just continues on to phase three. So the first thing that it's going to do is it's going, so this is a label, and then we're going to create dot count and we're going to set it to zero. And this is a registry key. Okay, so we're setting that registry key to zero. We look script. Don't ever use variables here. I have found that they do not work. It doesn't read it. So you have to put in the whole registry key here. So we're going to set that 
to zero. So then we're going to start our loop. So our loop is um, going to check um, if the serial count exists. So this is the one that includes the prefix and the serial number starting at zero. So if it exists, then we're going to go to found, which is um, phase five. If we get to 100,000, we want to go to error. And the reason that I added this one in is if for some reason an adjustment you made to this script made it operate incorrectly, we want to make sure it doesn't run in perpetuity because you can make dispatch scripts that never end. And when that happens, the only way to, to get out of it is to kill Explorer and get it running again. So I have that as just a, a catch-all to make sure that like if we get to a point where it's just not finding the file name, then we want to make sure it cancels instead of locking up all of Explorer and PDM and I can't do anything. So that's just a, a fail safe. So if you do have your, let's say your serial numbers start at 1 million, or I guess I have 100,000 there, then you want to change this. You want to change your upper threshold. And you also want to change your lower threshold. You don't want to start at zero if your serial numbers are up in the hundreds of thousands. Because I've tested this. It takes about 20 seconds for it to cycle through, not 20, maybe 15 seconds to cycle through 100,000 numbers. So you may want to change um, your starting threshold and your upper threshold. Okay? So... And then also, when you're creating new serial numbers, if you want it to start at a higher number um, other than zero, how I did, then you need to make sure that in that phase where it's creating it, it's not just putting dash zero, it's putting dash 100,001 or whatever it would start at, okay? So if we get up to there, it's going to go to the error, which is phase four. We'll talk about that one next. And then if it is found or not found then it's going to add one to the count so if we look at that how that's set up we're just taking that registry key again do not use a variable for this you must type it in and then we're just using an arithmetic function that you can find here and we're just doing add and then to the current count we're going to add one so that when we loop through, it's now doing what it was plus one. And then we can loop again and again and again and again. So phase four. This is if you have an error. So I just have it saying serial number has exceeded 100,000, and then it's going to jump to the end. So if someone contacts you and say they got this this no, this warning, then you need to look at, okay, what's the counter at on the file? Did they input things correctly? Have I changed the script in a way that it's not operating correctly or checking for the correct names? So um, these are the different reasons. So your serial number could be too high. The user may not have permission to see the virtual files. They must have permission to not only see the virtual files, but rename them for this script to work. Um, and then if virtual files were edit, manually edited incorrectly, and then a, a fourth one would be, did I edit the script and this, there's something wrong with the script? That would be another thing to check for. Okay, so this is where we actually do it, right? So um, phase five, this is where we're actually incrementing the serial number and assigning it to the file. In this case, I'm just putting it in the data card, but you could put it in the file name, you could put it in the data card, you could even put it in someone else's data card. You could, you have a lot of freedom now because we're doing it in dispatch and not in the classic serial numbers. Um, so let's step through this. So we start at the found label, and then we're gonna write to doc count two and we're going to add one. And I didn't write to doc count one because I found that when I did that, it messed with um, phase four. So we're just going to leave it as a separate one. So um, once we've added it to the doc count, oh, I remember exactly why. 
The reason that I have it as a separate one is because this is going to rename the file and we need the original number to find the correct file. So that's why I have them as two separate variables. So this will still reference the original number and then we're going to rename it to the new number. And then we're going to check out the file that initiated the dispatch script, upset, update the variable and check it back in. And then that is where we end. And we have a loop here. So um, phase three, or I think it's here. Let's look at the script. So if we look here, the for all documents loop actually starts all the way up here in phase three. And then it ends all the way down here in phase five. So it's going to run this on every single file. Three, four, and five run on every file that you initiated the script on. So who wants to see it happen? Let's do it. So I have um, it set up to use a menu command, but I could set it to happen during a transition. I could set it to happen when someone checks a file in. I have all kinds of different options because now I'm using dispatch and it's going to give me some more versatility. So I'm going to go into my vault and I have a file right here that I don't want to open. I have a hyperactive mouse today. Of course, it would choose the day I'm presenting. <laughs> so this one doesn't have a part number. Let's go ahead and add one. We'll right click on it. And I have my test set serial number. So it's giving me that edit box pop up. And uh, I'm going to then the PRT prefix and say OK. So that one already exists, so it went ahead and assigned it to my file. So PRT4 was the next one. If we look over here in our serial numbers, you can see that that file is updated to PRT4. What if we pick something that doesn't exist yet? So on this one, let's do a different one. Uh, we'll pick part, fully spelled out. Say OK to that. So you can see it is going to ask, do you want to create a new serial number? And that's because it could not find that file. If we say no, it'll do nothing. We look in the serial numbers, it doesn't create anything. But if we say yes, That's when the magic happens. So it's going to go ahead and create my new serial number and it's going to assign it to my data card. So you can see part one, go to my serial numbers, and I have a new serial number. And the counter is set appropriately. Pretty handy script. Especially if you have a situation where you guys could have thousands of prefixes, that makes this work so much better than the regular PDM serial numbers because you don't have to have an administrator go over here and add a new serial number every time somebody has a new assembly. Because I've had, had situations where uh, customers have, uh, for every assembly, they would have a completely different prefix. So this would give you that ability. So this is just showing, um, so adapting the solution. How could you adapt this to work for you? So what are other ways you can trigger it? You could trigger it, let's say, maybe when we go to in-process to pending approval, maybe we want to set that serial number then. Um, we could have it happen right when you add a file to the vault if you wanted to. You could also have it happen when you check in something. How can you adapt it, um, the script itself? Uh, instead of one user input, you could have multiples. Like maybe there's an assembly number and a department number they need to put in. You could put both in and then have the counter. Um, you could also combine dates with your serial numbers and have it reset automatically for week, um, weekly, monthly, year. If you have played with the serial numbers in PDM and you've tried to implement dates, there is a big limitation. You can put dates here can put year, month, day, but 
it doesn't automatically reset to zero when it's a new month. Well, if we use dispatch, we can reset that to zero with a new month or a week or a year. So um, it gives us more versatility with dates. Um, you could um, put multiple counters in one serial number if you wanted to as well. Thank you, everyone.